I put it to you like this, like anything people do down to the way they dress, the way they talk, that's an expression for them, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta rap my truth, you know what I mean? So that's all it is. With this music, this is our pain, this is our joy, this is our story. Like I can't help that this is my story. I can't help that I grew up in Peckham. I can't help that I saw all these things. As time goes on, you're gonna hear a change in this music. But right now, I'm not too far from the trenches, you see what I'm saying? Literally, mine is my ears, my nose, and my mouth because that's really like what I've got left. And I felt this like burst of euphoria through my brain, and I traveled out of my cell and I saw the world for what it was. You know what I mean? That's my therapy, you know what I'm trying to say? Switch it up a bit so there's no prosecution coming from it. I'll say whatever the fuck I want to say. That's, it. that's my right person. Say what I need to say. landed yesterday and I jumped off the plane. I just knew I was back, like, it was raining and it was just moody. You know what I mean? I just knew I was back. My friend passed away, he was a rapper, so at first I saw I just, like, made a track for him, messing about. And everyone just seemed to like it and it just started taking off from there. Being legit. It's definitely opened a lot of doors and definitely, like, changed my life in ways, yeah. Definitely. Yo, Tunde, Manchester, check it. Been about from day one, you can go and ask Rush me and what's I'm starving. Cranked off in a back bush, cause if sh pulls up, then it's getting wrapped up. I'm from C block, we all just wanna get our racks up. I remember naps took me on my first graph, cut a long story short, shit hit that front the like not even getting in stuff, obviously. Okay, 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 yeah, what did you do? Who's this? Because the... Stop! Who's the director? Using this walls? Get it out of the way! It's more of a new wave we sort of started, like... The way the London kids took the drill sound from like Chicago, we've sort of taken the sound from like the Bay Area and LA and from Detroit as well, like a T Grizzly sort of sound. So we didn't try and like change no accents, we're just going in on the beat in a Manchester way and it's, it sort of works. When the feds came and all that, they had to just get out of there quick, bro. Because I ended up getting a bit peak. Like, obviously, you get artists that come in and like cover their faces and stuff like that. Sometimes I do wish I'd done that. Can't really go nowhere no more. People always like wanting photos, and that's a bit of a change to me. Everything I can see in my brain, everything I've lived through. I just lay it out, that's it. That's my therapy. Switch it up a bit so there's no prosecution coming from it. I say whatever the fuck I want to say. That's my writing process. Say what I need to say. I will. Survival skills, that's growing up in Peckham, bro. Just survival, you know what I'm saying? Like, having your wits about you, that's Peckham. Not giving a fuck about whatever else anyone else has got going on. That's Peckham, you see what I'm saying? We just do our thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me record shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ran that. We was in them hallways on that side by side shit. Streets told me crime pace, and I did that night nice shit. I'm a real nigga, and I'm putting that on Taz's grave. Handcuffs and chain, they really had me as a slave. Toothbrush and a blade, I had to play it safe, nigga. Pull it back. I'm gonna start freestyling it soon. Now I've got the. You know what I'm saying? Most of it. So I'm gonna start doing it off the head top, like. When you listen to the music, what this is my music is about. Picture yourself waking up, your area is taped off because two, two shots went off or something like that. You, you got 10 missed calls because your brethren's dead. I didn't ask for that. 
you gotta look up where we're coming from before you judge the whole situation. I'm from where the blood drops and gets cleaned up. Like nothing worked there. Niggas crying out loud in the streets and they acting like they know. We're dealing with big man situations when we're like 13. Some man start 12, some man are 11. How would I know how to, you get what I'm trying to say? I gotta make rapid decisions in my face right now. These days, like you go into the estate, you won't see anyone. Like everything's on your phone and I don't know what it is. Back in the day, it really, really was real, in it? Like there was no cameras, there was no technology. The police weren't really the same as like how it is now, you know what I mean? Like they could get away with a lot more and the guys that were about were like really serious, you know what I mean? I kind of just like the, this is what's attached yeah, to this, the rubber bit on the jumper, you know what I'm saying? Look, I lost my sight, but I managed it. I still wonder what vanished it. Smoking top shelf, no average. Look, they call me stoner because I got the cannabis. I ain't got time for these dumb guys. They be telling all these dumb lies. Someone threw acid in my mum's eyes. Left my mum blind, yeah, they fucked up my mum's life. Man. But that's the sort of shit that changed me. I mean, that's the sort of shit that made me. Plus, I lost mine. You think something else could fade me? Crazy. I'm surprised I ain't crazy. I was 20 these times, and one day it just went. Come home to put a jacket on. Everyone's already at the carnival, and yeah, it just went. Then it come back for two weeks, and then went again up to today completely out of the blue. Even the doctor said I won't lose my sight, you know what I mean? So it's just like, what the fuck? The first time it happened, I just sat down and I was like, I didn't know what to think. Then I realised after like half hour or something, this is when I just sat there, because I used to wear contacts, so I took it out, clean it, and then I put it back in, realised I couldn't see, so then I just like, fuck me, not now, do you know what I mean? First year or so, it was horrible, bro. Like, literally, it was the worst thing. I couldn't even... <sighs> when I smoked weed and stuff, I wasn't getting high. Even sexual intercourse got hard for me. All these things. You could see a girl and automatically get attracted. Now, little things are the things that attract me now. Do you know what I mean? I had to teach my brain how to do certain things again, or just not care about certain things. Senses are high, very, very high. Even picking up energy from people. I can be in a place and I could be like, boys, let's leave here because the energy is not right. That's something that I gained over time, especially my hearing. Sometimes I don't even notice. I'll be like, yo, can you not hear that? They'll be like, what? And I'll be like, shush, listen. They'll be like, oh my God, your hearing's mad, like. Third eye, literally. Mine is my ears, my nose and my mouth because that's really like what I've got left. I use my ears to listen all the greatness. I use my nose to smell all the fragrance. I use my mouth to taste all the flavours. I can't see all you haters. When I dream, yeah, it's clear. Then I wake up and my vision isn't here. Now that's certain that I fear. How can it go and then reappear? Then I realise that I'm wide awake. Thinking all the things I'ma try today yeah. If it don't work, I'ma find a way Big man ting, I might cry today You couldn't walk in my shoes Couple old friends only talk to a few I record in the booth The truth so you know they support all the moves Any true artist knows like music has no colour Art has no... It doesn't, it doesn't mean nothing Any real person knows that There's people I'm out here that have never experienced what I've experienced Like complete I was just basically buried alive for three years. That's where the magic began. 
my community, Sikh Punjabi community. I have thousands of calls every day in my office and my mobile phone. So we are very happy to much proud on him, you know. He's very nice boy. Very, very nice. God bless him. I visited 60 countries in my life, 6 0. Yeah. But, but he's I, never been to Ibiza. Yeah, Ibiza is very good. You know. very <laughs> good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in my dad's office right now, where I used to have my decks downstairs because uh, it was too noisy at home. Double would be here, DWE, Sharky Major would be here. Just like loads of big crews from back in the day. We'd come here and do sets on the weekend, man, and we used to record them. There used to be loads of people, man, it was crazy. So it was like a youth centre, man, for the ends. That's when I started to visualise him becoming a producer. I think I was about 11 years old. I've got to go to the essence, yeah? I said to him, if you pay for a course for me at SAE, which is Sound uh, Audio Engineering Institute, I said to him, if you pay for me, I'll never be a bad boy again. And let me do a music course. Three months into the course, pow, I was in jail. Your dad's raised you well, your mum's raised you well. But for some reason, you an arsehole. You're just a kid and your life's moving mad fast and then you just end up in complete solitude. Once I got received my six year prison sentence, that's when I started to get into it. And then I started like, my mum really started activating like spirituality into me. And my dad would send me books, my mum would send me books. I started to discover myself because I was in a, in a room coming from being around 15 to 20 people every day on the block down that road, smoking weed, chatting shit, I ain't getting into fights to completely being withdrawn into one room and it's just been me. I've never had that ever. And I've got two years and a bit left, just me on my own in a room. And I just got to know myself on an absolute different level when I started to realise the powers I had. Yo, I this is a part of my old story, you know? Like as sad as it is, I spent a lot of time in here more than I spent on the roads, you know what I mean? Eight and a half years, every single everyone knows the story. I see Penny, bro. This is my first, like, adult jail. When I was in processing, like, in the holding rooms, a shocking thing happened. I see a man that used to be, like, from my ends, you know what I'm saying? He was, like, smoked out, like, he was on the track, and, like, it looked like the streets had eat him up and spat him back out, you know what I'm saying? So doing them kind of things there can lead up to anywhere, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. The whole experience was eye-opener still. I'm going to use that, that pain. People die, people go in jail. That's giving my drive to do this shit right now. So that's my purpose, you get me? Fumes from them crack pipes, stepping over dope needles. You know you're scarred for life when the image won't leave you. You ever sat parole, knowing they ain't gone free you? As for my dead niggas, don't know when I'm gone to see you. Come. This year and a half I've been out has been the most, like, happy. I've been waiting for that day since 10 years ago. And it just come to you like that. I don't know, sometimes I pinch myself now, bro. I ain't travelled yet, that's about it. But this is the most enjoyment I've had in my life, to be honest. There was loads of people from South London in this particular jail that I was in, which was Guy's Marsh. And then I met Young Meth and Fix Dottom there, and Colors Miyagi. And they were rapping on the wing. See, I was making beats on the chapel keyboard, on when you could do chapel music class in the chapel. <laughs> and then we would do like a little rap thing or whatever, just to get out of ourselves. Luckily for me, my sister was sending me money, and my dad. And uh, I bought a keyboard off Argos, it's like a hundred quid, but in there it's worth like a hundred grand, you know what I mean? Some, some cunt tried to steal my keyboard, so we had to have it out. After that, I just used to hide my keyboard under a towel and that, and then fucking, when I used to lock my doors, I used to play the beats out the cell window. Listen to this beat that I just made. And then it would be like the whole wing, and then I got popular and it was cool. Because the music started touching people, because the way I was playing and how it was sounding was coming from a different place of pain, you know what I'm saying? My first meditation came from a priest that came in and he looked at me and he goes, you guys are having a hard time here. You don't need to say God's name. I kind of did it and I felt this like burst of euphoria through my brain and I traveled out of my cell and I saw the world for what it was. You know what I mean? 
Maybe I am meant to be here. Maybe I'm meant to train myself, meditate, get stronger, and become a different version to everyone else that's out there. I've actually been blessed. So it turned the way I looked at the prison sentence, I looked at life, I looked at my friends, I looked at everything. What am I good at? Music. That's what I'm going to go and do, and I'm going to become the biggest at it. And then I started training for that. I started to manifest, and one day I just went away and like just really thought about it. It's a type of day daydreamy meditation. It's not like a deep meditation. It's like accessing my brain around loads of greenery and I thought, you know what it is? It's fucking UK garage. And I started watching all these DVDs on when everyone used to take ecstasy and that and all cracked out, but the music was making them nang and that. These same people that were doing that, their children are the ones that I'm about to make music for. So it went to that deep to like, I knew it was in their DNAs. That was my formula, but that came through visualization and studying and understanding. So that's a type of meditation. That's a type of spiritual connection to the universe for answers. You know where I'm coming from? Stone, a real rap, man. Thanks for this life, look ungrateful. Pay mummy's bills, food on the table. Never had a manager, never had a label. If I win the lotto, promise I'm a sable. Every time I dream is normal vision. It's scary as fuck, like literally normal vision. And sometimes the dreams are recent dreams. I've always got an image in my head of people I've seen. So that image is always coming in my dream. They might look different now, but the image what I see is always in my dream. Do you know what I mean? The dreams are crazy. Being blind, you have to remember every single thing. Down to where I put my drink. More time I spill my drink because I'm feeling on the side and I tip it over. Sometimes I am alone at home and stuff and I think, fuck, you know, if I could just go for a walk or something, you know what I'm saying? I can't do all that. I just have to deal with the situation. What's on this? Literally just got the candle, like, you know, I'm not over it, but yeah. I have good, good people around me. Without the people around me, God knows what I would do. So it's basically, you'll see me from a mile away. Yeah. It's black though, that's what I'm thinking. My friends are 100% with me, man, 100%. I could ring my friend and say, yo, can I go to the shop? Here, come get me. If I can go through being blind with a click of a finger, anyone could do anything, really, isn't it? The bottom line is nothing can stop you, do you know what I mean? You just have to move on. Don't let anything, like anything, hold you back because I still do everything I used to do. I still ride motorbikes when my friends are in the field. It's about how strong your mentality is. It's not about whatever people think. It's about how you feel as a person. Once you're happy, fuck the world, really, innit? Like I was just on the edge anyway. My friend got killed and then that's when it just hit me sort of thing. Life's too short. Doing music for him and carrying on his legacy, and like same time, bettering myself as well. I just realised that everything was magic, and that came through breathing and peacefully and and visualising. Do something that's going to remove you from your situation. And music's not going to be for everyone. I don't know. You might be able to turn your story and be a motivational speaker. There's so much things in the world you could do. If you find your way out and you find your lane, chase that lane and push forward.